I have been following the robot story since the beginning of the robot story. Since the Elon Musk mission was published, we've been talking about the robot story and it is just in most, maybe the most incredible story of our lifetimes, Brian, maybe landing on the moon. I mean, there's a few things, but I'm not sure that the world really gets it yet, how big a deal this is. Um, have you been following it uh, fairly closely, Brian? The bots, why, what is this of which you speak? <laughs> the I've been following it, uh, I would call this more exciting than the moon landing because that didn't happen within my lifetime. Oh, uh, they, they had right. already stopped. They that's... had already stopped. So in my lifetime, uh, this is, you know, when we were young and this goes for both of us, I bet, I don't know what kind of uh, sci-fi you were reading HG Wells for sure, but there were a few key elements of the future. One was bots, ubiquitous bots. The other was uh, easy space travel often yeah. with reusable vehicles. And the other was uh, so cars that drive themselves. Now, of course, there's flying cars. Flying cars, yeah. You know, we already have those. They're called planes or helicopters. And they they don't, you know, the, the two use cases are too different. I don't think we'll ever see those. If you've got the kind of power efficiency that you would need to have a reasonable flying car, you would also have a car that could drive 4,000 miles between charges. And right. I think that would be... That would be a better use, except you wouldn't need 4,000. You'd settle on 500 to 1,000 and have something that weighs vastly less, okay, and is cheaper, okay. So bots, if you look back just a few years ago, there was only one player who was remotely considered serious, and that was Boston Dynamics. Yes. But if you did any kind of digging on what they were working on, you'd see they're not, they were not serious. This was, Atlas was never a bot that they were going to commercialize. It was a demonstration. Its sole purpose was to raise additional rounds of funding. And in that regard, it was a complete success. If you looked at the videos, you would see there's QR codes everywhere. It is on rails. It is not, it doesn't have a brain that can do much, certainly not new tasks. And then if you look at, at the videos, even the dancing video, which is much more recent and much more exciting, you'll notice in the background, everyone is bored. And that's because this is take 27. Right. And it, it, they had, if, it, if they had actually the capacity to do it in one take, everybody would be gathered around to watch it instead of just kind of milling about. Even last week's demo, uh, Dr. Scott Walter uh, reached out to me and said, hey, uh, Brian, can, you're good at figuring out locations. Which factory are these bots operating in? And I found it. It was the Boston Dynamics Demo Lab. It's the same place they did the dancing. So these are, they may be, they finally got fingers. That's great. You lost the tennis balls. But this is even just a few years ago. Fast forward to today, and we've seen Optimus demos that are a bit mind boggling. We've seen them from other companies as well. We've seen probably five companies that have a product more compelling than what Boston Dynamics had three years ago. Yeah. So this is moving very, very quickly. And I don't think a lot of people get it yet. This is a level of disruption that humans struggle to understand. Yeah, and of course, uh, the question is, you know, how is it being disseminated? How is the information being disseminated? It's not being disseminated on 60 Minutes. I don't think 60 Minutes has done anything on the bot. Not that 60 Minutes is the be all and end all, but they tend to be the, one of the places where you would see a development like this in the early stages if people were getting the vision. But uh, it's odd to me that they're not getting the vision. I mean, the One X video uh, that dropped a couple of days ago where we had the centaur i'm calling it the centaur bot <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. but it was on wheels and a lot of people said hey, why not on wheels you eliminate all the complexity of the legs having to balance and all the rest of it and these bots were quite capable of manipulating things and making things happen and and the the company is apparently getting some funding from some very large uh uh, uh, folks out there, some folks that have a lot of money out there. Uh, uh, the figure, the, um, I'm sorry, the, the, the what's the one that's uh, in the Stanford lab? I, I keep forgetting what to call that one. I, I, don't, I can't keep them all straight. You can't keep them all straight too, but they're getting money from Microsoft. Um, you know, uh, we understand that figure is uh, uh, 
maybe raising money right now. I have sources there telling me that they're in the process. They kind of uh, intimated that they were in the process of raising money. So there's uh, you know, a, a lot of money probably going to be pouring into these uh, products. Um, and yet the public seems really unaware. What, what, what do you think, what do you think the, where will the breakthrough come? What will it need to be for the public to go, oh my gosh, look at that. Commercialization. That's it. That's the bottom line. Uh, when I was talking with Scott Walter about it, we had a private chat where he was looking at the, the, the future, future, what was it? Future bot, Fu the, the one we were just talking about. Figure? Figure. Thank yes, you. Figure. The figure, he said he had looked at something that had come out. He had very serious reservations. He was deeply skeptical. And he said, I'm going to withhold judgment because I believe I've got an opportunity to speak with him within the next week and get some of my questions answered. He had that interview. I think it was on Brighter with Herbert. Yes. And, and, and he said, I got my answers. I am no longer, I have a better understanding. I know what I have a better idea of what its limitations are. And I'm glad that I withheld judgment because the answers were forthcoming and they were what we were hoping to see. So that's good on that front. But we're talking about when will the market recognize it? About a year and a half, two years ago, I had an interview with Matt Smith. Uh, at the time, he was with Good Soil Investment. Now he's with Rebellionaire. And he and I asked him, when will Wall Street start modeling for Megapack? Because mega pack, it's right there. It's in your face. How can you miss it? How can you not see this coming? And he said, they're not going to model it until it makes a meaningful contribution to the bottom line. Right. And then a quarter or two later, the, we hit that threshold. Wall Street is starting to count it. You regular. You of the, uh, yeah. Uh, that, yeah. Not all of them, but a couple of them. Not all. Yeah. Well, most of them at this point, I think are. Most, I would say, but but you're right. Nowhere close to all. Now, you and I may may when I say you and I, the general public, I think, still doesn't get stationary storage, but they don't need to. No. They don't need to. It doesn't affect their daily life. The odds of you ever seeing one in person are very low, and if you'd seen one, the odds of knowing what it is are even lower. It's a mini storage warehouse. <laughs> mini, yeah, maybe. I I don't know. It's a bun bunch of boxes, utility right. something. I don't know. Conversely, the first time you see a bot doing a task, you will get it. And you don't have to see it in person. If, if somebody works in a factory or a warehouse or a retail, anywhere where a bot is deployed in a commercial capacity, it'll be all over TikTok and X and Reddit and you name it. It's going to be as big as the Cybertruck. So what we need to do is get Optimus out there to just polish the fingerprints on the Cybertruck all day. That's your job. That's what you do. That would be the next huge draw to locations bigger than the Cybertruck itself. You because oh, I'm sorry. You don't have to like this. There are people who will not go look at the Cybertruck because eh, I'm not a car person. I'm not a truck, but a, but a robot doing a task, that's, that's big. I think he could open the door for the people that are going to get into the car. He could uh, he could take your information, you know, when you get there, you know. So your the follow up information. I mean, there's the 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 more because I was over at that Sphere in Las Vegas. Okay, I, I've already commented that the Sphere was not as cool as I was expecting it, but I didn't see you two performing. I saw their standard. <laughs> their standard program, which was okay, but wasn't amazing for 130 bucks a chair. But anyway, they had a, a, a pre thing where you went in uh, while you're waiting for your time and you walked around and they had a lot of exhibits and the exhibits were pretty cool actually in general, but they did have a couple of robots there that were um, talking to the folks in front of them and asking questions and responding to the questions and the robots could move, you know, so there's this idea and people were not, they were, you know, there was a good crowd around them. So I think there's this concept too, that there's robots that can do some things. And so what is the cool thing? What is the next, what, what, what is it about an Optimus that makes it so much better than these bots that are just standing there and they have a voice and they have 
can kind of respond to you. It needs to be a, maybe something. I mean, that's why I think Atlas does get so many eyeballs is because it does backflips and parkour and throws boxes off of things, then jumps on the box. I mean, it's pretty cool stuff and dances, dances with the dog. Now they dance together. I mean, uh, that kind of stuff, I think, is grabbing eyeballs more than maybe a bot that can drill a hole. And that's fair. What Atlas is trying to do is demonstrate superhuman capacity. Not everyone can dance, not everyone can do parkour, uh, but everyone can drill a hole, presumably. Right. At least with, you know, a minute or two of training, right. I should hope everyone can drill a hole. Uh, it doesn't have to, I'd argue, it doesn't have to be sexy. It has to have a financial benefit attached. Having a talking torso at the sphere is a neat party trick. You attach it to, you could have a, a concierge at any museum where it's just, it just has all the data from the archives of the, of that museum or of all museums. Right. And you can just ask it questions about history. Grok or chat GPT can feed the answer back. It can simulate, you know, mount of facial gestures and all that. That's a very cool party trick, but I don't see that moving the needle because that's not replacing anyone. Uh, that's, you know, there's still humans there who could do, it's not like you're going to lose a paid position because of that. Right. If anything, you'd have to add one to keep it running. Uh, there's, but when it comes to actual deployment in the field, I think that's where, where the, where the rubber meets the road. Yeah. So um, I've always said that the way to do this uh, and people who don't do trade shows don't understand it, but you take that bot to any trade show, manufacturing trade show, distribution trade show, um, uh, a pharmaceutical trade show where they have all the automated automation equipment for for a pill, you know, putting pills in bottles and whatnot. You take an, a, the bot to those kind of shows and have it do the kinds of functions that you normally would see from automation equipment. So it's kind of in its right world and it's doing stuff that automation equipment can't do. You would just take orders all day. You would just stand there. It would just, it would just be, yes, how many do you want? Oh, okay, let me write that down. <laughs> I mean, because it's uh, it, the people who understand automation or who understand any methodology for getting, as you point out, you know, more stuff out for less money, those are the folks that are going to pay this kind of attention immediately. Yes. And I, and I agree with you. This is disruption on a scale we haven't seen. It's very close to ready from a bunch of brands. And I don't think it is entirely possible that someone will be first to market before Optimus because Optimus is, Optimus is viewed as having a higher threshold for minimum viable product. If they wanted it to just do something, it's already ready to go. And you've been saying that since last year. With what they have, they could already be selling them or renting them. But this is not the product they want to sell. They want something that isn't going to be outmoded in a month. And the speed at which Grok, uh, Grok Optimus <laughs> is developing, maybe Grok enabled, the speed at which Optimus is developing is much too rapid to lock in anything for deliveries today, in my opinion. Yeah, I think uh, I was coming to this conclusion over the last few <sighs> weeks. I've watched all these different videos that that apparently Optimus is supposed to be a general purpose bot when it goes out. If you take it over to a machine and you show it 50 times how to do it, and then you let it do it 50 times under supervision, then it should be able to start doing it reliably. Whatever, not whatever, but within a pretty wide range of, of, of jobs. And then if you, tomorrow, you want it to do something else, you should be able to do and, and have it go over and do that. That's something else. Now, it's combined knowledge, which is what I thought was going to be important. I thought that uh, again, that 1X video where they showed it at 20 or 30 different stations around the inside of something that looked like somebody's home. But anyway, they had all these bots standing at stations and doing jobs. That's kind of how I pictured what they would do with Optimus. So that we get lots and lots and lots of experience at hundreds and hundreds of jobs. And that combination of experience would get them where they're going. It appears now that what they want is 
something that understands everything about sorting, everything about picking up tools and, and handling them, everything about working in an environment, everything about shoulder to shoulder, elbow to elbow with a human, um, those kinds of things. So that there's a kind of this general sense of how to operate because maybe the individual job is is the, actually the easy part yeah i guess so if you say so <laughs> no but you're absolutely right you're absolutely right and the thing is so you've been talking about bots for ages like before the experts showed up to give their two cents my biggest video last year was our discussion about the bots yeah. and thank you for that by the way uh uh, you will not be receiving a check, <laughs> but, but, uh, what I'm going to be doing, and this is, this is a spoiler alert. You guys, you should know this is I've got a very big, very important bot video coming out next Tuesday or Wednesday. And what I'm going to be doing is pouring through all of Randy's past bot videos and his bot predictions. And I'm going to be just putting his feet to the fire and finding out what's what because there are people alive who know more about bots than you but there are not many and uh certainly none that uh are willing to speak uh without a non-disclosure agreement you know well and then there's the other side of the bot story which i believe is is my is my job in the bot story my job in the bot story is to listen to what all these other experts are saying Ask them the best questions I can possibly ask them, but then be willing to step up and maybe be a little bit outside the box in terms of what happens next. That so, is a very charitable description of your optimism. <laughs> yes, but I mean, for instance, when, the, when you saw these 1X bots standing at these stations doing all these tasks, I said that I thought that's what Optimus would be doing I don't know, eight months ago, I thought nobody had talked about that idea of having a whole bunch of stations around a warehouse and just have, you know, one doing drilling, one doing screwdrivering, one doing putting hasps on a, I, one putting padlocks on a hasp. I mean, you could have hundreds of jobs. They learn those jobs. And then the next day they start on the next job and the next job. And all of that goes into that, uh, it, the total sum of its knowledge because it's an over-the-air update. That thought had not been stated that I can find by anybody before I stated it. So that's the kind of thing I try to do is based based on my manufacturing experience, based on understanding what happens in a manufacturing environment, how will this apply? Why is it going to apply? And why is it so important? Now, the thing that I came up with that I'm sure others have thought of, but I haven't heard elucidated is that, Tesla's all about maximizing and optimizing vertical space, cubic space. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a place like Giga Texas where the ceiling is 40 feet up, you don't have to have eight, 10, 12 feet, giving you a maximum of three floors-ish. Bots can operate in whatever space is available. They're under six feet tall. They could have literally six, six and a half feet of clearance on each floor and you could have vertical stations that optimize the space extremely well. Yeah. And that's, and that's something OSHA would not tolerate for humans, humans no. but, but in, but this is the inside of a machine. Now the inside of a machine has different requirements. If it is a locked out area, then it can operate in, in, in ways that are uh, pretty different. Yes, that's true. All right. Well, Brian, um, as we'll we'll find out whether this bot video could top the bot video that we did on your channel, because, you know, that's what we're always trying to do is do more, do better. Reach more people, get the word out. Yes. All right. Well, as always, <laughs> I always hate to say that because of your joke about it, as sometimes. And anyway. Uh, <laughs> See, my jokes are so good, I don't even have to tell them. I know, I know. They're just running through my head at all times. I can't get them out. There's a story about that that Edgar Allan Poe told. Uh, you know, we have this time now, Brian, at the end where we can just do whatever we <clears> want <throat> to and people are actually watching this, these outtakes at the end. Did you ever hear <laughs> Edgar Allan Poe's story where the, 
guy comes up and he sits down next to this lady on the, or, you know, she's sitting on a park bench or something, and she's looking extremely distressed. And the guy goes, what in the world is going on? She goes, I've got this song running through my head. I can't, I, it's just over and over and over again. He's really, she goes, yeah, it's been going on for days now. I haven't slept for three days. That's why I look like this. And he goes, oh, I'm mean, so sad. That's just terrible. He says, what is the song? And she sings it a little bit. And after she sings it a little bit, he's like, that is catchy. And he starts to sing it. And then she walks away. She goes, I don't know what happened. It's gone. <laughs> and then he's singing it over and over again. I assume that song is Despacito. I'm told it was quite catchy and people had a problem with it, but I don't, I don't know. I, I don't, I'm sure I've heard the song, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, yes. it's great. I'm so glad we had this part of the discussion, this bonus I wanted, uh, I wanted for the to, true fans. Yeah, I know for the true fans to who, share your culture, who will listen to almost anything. They're just, yeah, yeah I get yeah. <laughs> Anyway, so follow Brian on o over there on Future Aza. Aza. Future Aza. Future Aza. Yep. Future Aza. Future, Aza. Future, Aza. Mm -hmm. future, future. The word Aza. future, A-Z-A. It's that on all platforms now. It's that on X, YouTube, Patreon, everywhere you may hope to find me. I am Future Aza. Future Aza. Okay, do that. And then that's all. That's all I got. I'm done. It's you should thank talk. people. <laughs> yeah. Thank Oh, thank the people that watched. Yeah. People that stayed this long. Yeah. <laughs> Brian, see you later. <laughs>